but not in kind. We're here in the library of the Henry Viscardi School with Johnny and Bonnie Kmiatek, whose little boy is one of the students in this program. I think that you'll find their spiritual adventure very moving, and it will fit so beautifully into the purposes of this remarkable center here in Nassau County. Could you tell me, Bonnie, what happened to you? How did you get here? Well, um, I was a little, I was about six months pregnant, and I gave birth to my son 13 weeks prematurely. We went to the hospital when my water broke, and the doctor said, um, your baby probably won't make it, so he sent us home and said, I'll see you tomorrow, gave me some medicine. The next day we went back and he said, I can't help you, you have to go to a hospital that can is equipped for a neonatal. So he kind of like left us on our own, so we, um, my mom drove us to Nassau County Medical Center where they took excellent care of us. They told us that he would have a better chance outside of me than inside that he had a 50-50 chance, so we would do everything we can to save his life, and uh, they really did. They did an emergency C-section, and then he spent the next 82 days growing and pretty much in an incubator, pretty much designed to be like my womb. How did you feel when all this was going on? It was uh, unbelievable. I couldn't, you know, we, I felt so helpless the whole time, and uh, it was such a shock that, uh, you know, he came three months early. We didn't even uh, go through Lamaze or, you know, about anything about the birthing yet because it was so early on. So when uh, she broke her water, we really almost didn't even know what that meant too much until we um, got to the hospital. And uh, we thought, I, you know, I had total trust in my doctor that he would take care of us and tell us what was going on. And he was pretty nervous himself, it seemed, because it was such an early, um, you know, thing going on. So when we went to uh, Nassau County Medical, they explained to us that it has no uh, fluid in my wife's in the womb, and the baby, every time she was having a contraction, the baby was uh, actually almost getting choked, like, because there was no protection of the water in there. So it was uh, very scary. What got you through? Prayer. Prayer. Faith. Hope. Did you pray a great deal? Did you pray like you never prayed before? Very much. I mean, I prayed the rosary the whole time while I was waiting to have my surgery. Um, my husband and I just prayed with each other every chance we got, and that just that he would live. You know, please God, don't take him. Just, you know, whatever, we'll take it. Just, you know, just for his life. And then after he was born, we prayed every single day over him in the, in the neonatal. Every single night, we left rosary beads there. We made a little tape recorder. Um, and on it, at home, my husband and myself, we prayed the Hail Mary, the Alpha, Father, you know, your basic prayers over and over and over again. Then we left it in the incubator, along with our voice and our talking and cooing to him, and then the prayers. <clears throat> so he heard them also when we weren't there. Were you very prayerful people before this? Um, I would say not. I don't, we no. pretty much went out and partied and did whatever we wanted. And we didn't really have any kind of direction in that sense. Didn't go to mass regularly. Your life has changed since then? Oh, yes. Total change. Drastic change. Yeah. Could you tell us about that? Well, now we, uh, of course, with our family, being raised in a Catholic family, so now we attend Mass all the time. And, you know, our main focus is to receive Jesus and to teach our kids how important that is and to follow, you know, the Pope's teachings. And uh, in our, just in our daily life as a family, just to be good and honest and try to be the best Catholics we can be. You mentioned that you prayed in tongues. Some of our audience may not quite know what that means. How did you feel when you prayed in tongues? Tell me a little bit about it. Well, um, seeing my mother being a very prayerful woman, uh, she had received the gift many years ago of tongues. And uh, I always witnessed her uh, praying over um, people when they were injured, like my father hurt his back, or um, family members. And her and her friends um, had a little prayer group, and they would pray over people. And uh, I had, when I was younger, I had a knee problem, 
and my mother prayed over me in this tongues, which I knew nothing about. And uh, my knee, when I went to the doctor, was totally fine. The doctor couldn't explain it. So when my, uh, we walked out of the office, my mother you know, explained to me what she was doing and how she was praying in tongues. And uh, when Bob was just about to go into the emergency C-section, uh, we prayed together, and I prayed over her, and I got the gift. And I was shocked, because I was like, what is that? He just started praying, and it was beautiful. It was just beautiful. I started to cry. It really was. Yeah. A lot of peace came over us. So then I wanted it. So then I asked my mother-in-law, and she said, you have to ask for it. So I prayed very hard every night. Please, 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 I wanted it to pray over my son and any other children and my family. And I prayed every single night for it. And one night after he was home, I was praying over him in his crib, and everyone was sleeping. And all of a sudden, it just I just got the gift, and it was beautiful. And it was amazing because my husband was sleeping in the other side of the room. And I didn't want to stop because I didn't know what it was, and I thought if I stopped, it wouldn't come back. And I almost wish he was awake, that he could share this experience with me. And um, I stayed up late that night, and he told me the next day that something happened, and he heard me, and he woke up. So while I was sitting there praying in tongues, wishing he was experiencing, because I knew he would be very happy for me, he also was sharing in my joy. I just didn't know it. You have another little child. Could you tell me about her? The child. Yes. Tell us about her. I also had a premature baby again. Teresa was... Um, Eight, she was eight weeks premature. Um, fortunately enough, she was a bit more healthy when she was born. Girls tend to be stronger, and she had a chance to mature and develop a little more in the womb. So uh, <coughs> she only spent about six weeks in the hospital. She really wasn't too delayed, and now she's a beautiful, healthy little girl. Why did it happen? I don't know why. <laughs> you don't know why? No. Do you ask anyone? No, not really. Why not? Um, because I don't, I don't think I'll ever, in this lifetime, I won't know why. And it takes too much time to keep asking why and pity myself. I'd rather just deal with it. So you do what? You work hard to... Very hard. Get this little boy, this mm -hmm. wonderful education that's available to him. Yes. Yeah. Do you ever get discouraged with his progress? No, never. Do you ever get discouraged or upset over the whole thing? Yes. Yeah. Of course. What you, you get upset like, now, too, when you see, you know, all the children around, like all the family members with their kids, and they run her around, and Johnny, you know, obviously can't run around. So that affects you. He doesn't get upset, but when you sit back and you watch it... You get upset. He, I, he's having a great time. Right. What do you do when you're upset? Um, well, we talk to each other. Yeah. With all that's happened, has your life improved? Our marriage is rock solid. I mean, it really, we have, people say you either make it or you break it. And this happened five weeks after we were married, and we just clung to each other, yeah. right? And we're always there for each other. And we have, we have a wonderful marriage. It's very strong, and we're always there for each other. <clears throat> and would you say that your family's a happy family? Yes. Family. Oh, yeah. Very happy. Even the challenges and mm -hmm. everything else. Sure. Do they contribute to your happiness? Yes. Oh, yeah. I think every day, every day they contribute to our happiness, right? Sure. Just watching him, whether it's with a walker or struggling and not keeping up, it's just a joy just having the two of them. They laugh, they smile, they tell us they love us. We have so much fun together, you know? Has the Viscardi School been helpful to you? Is it really something that has been a positive influence in your life? Very. Oh, yeah. yeah. This school is the best. This. I don't know where we would be without the school. When my son started <coughs> here, he was not even ambulatory, not even with a toy. And now he's on the, on the walker and he's advancing to the yeah. crutches. And, um, and also mentally, my son, how they really they they, have they thrive on that. Yeah, they really. They make these kids the best they can possibly be. They have yeah. therapy. They have a heated pool. They, the children, the other children are great. The teachers are great. I mean, I because this place is just incredible. I mean, it's too bad public schools can't be this. So when all is said and done, is, has it been a blessing? Yes. Oh, yeah. Say it. This has been a great blessing. He, uh, it, even though you wouldn't think it is, but it is. It, it brought us together as two people. It brought us together as a family. It gave us the Lord in our marriage. It gave us direction in our life. It gave us hope. I exactly. mean, it's, it really... Now we have a purpose here. Yes. 
Here we see Brother Michael Kmiatek, Johnny's brother, holding little John Francis. Brother Michael is one of the senior members of our community. He's one of two friars who joined us almost immediately after we got started eight years ago. Uh, Brother Michael has been a prayer partner to his brother and sister-in-law through all that happened to them. As you can see, he's very proud of his nephew. This is John Francis's whole family, and we see his grandmother Jackie there. I know she doesn't look much like a grandmother, but she is, and she's been a spiritual rock and stay to this young couple in this difficult time. We see Teresa and John Francis. Here we see John Francis walking with his little device which keeps him going. He's moving shortly to hand sticks which will permit him to even walk a bit more. You need to remember that this little boy was almost completely incapacitated when he started at the Viscardi School. It was very difficult for him to function at all. In a couple of years, he has made tremendous progress. As we walk away from the Henry Viscardi School, having visited with Dr. Viscardi and with Johnny, I think each one of you, like myself, should have some profound thoughts. We are all disabled in one way or another. Walking around the school today, I've seen people accomplish incredible things. Children overcoming incredible obstacles. None of these people, or their parents, or their friends, is wasting a lot of time on the question, why? But they are doing a great deal with the question, what? What am I to do with faith? The Henry Biscotti School shows us what one man in a lifetime could do with a firm and prayerful faith in God and in his grace and help to overcome obstacles.